my peepers. Welcome to a new episode of What's New in Shaleen's Neck of the Woods. So today, we're going to use my Prismacolor markers. And we are going to color in the Color It, a colorful Christmas coloring book. I will have the link down below for this. And I will have a link down below for the markers. Um, Scott bought me the markers two years ago at Michael's. It was a 48 set. I believe they were like $200 and I had a 40% off coupon. So I got them and they came in, you get two cases. They come in this case and it has a zipper. And you put your markers in these slots. But the neat thing is, when you're coloring, you can... How did I do that? This way. You pull this up, and you take that little toggle, and you push it down. And it turns it into a stand while you're coloring. So you can see all your colors. I have been buying open stock of these to have extra so that I can have the whole collection. I now have three cases full, filled because I you can buy these cases separate on Amazon. I bought a separate case and I've been buying open stock of these markers. These are alcohol markers. They have two tips. They have, and there's different kinds. You can get it with a brush on one end and the fine tip on the other. Or you can buy them. Let me see, I gotta find one because I don't have many of them. I don't think. Here we go. Or you can buy it with the fine tip and the, the nib. I prefer the brush. So most of mine have a brush. There is, I believe, 160 colors for, um, if I went on Dick Blick, it said that there's 200 colors, but if you, if you print up a swatch or a, a color guide, there's only 156. So I don't understand, or 165, I can't remember, I don't understand where the other colors are so um but I am buying them slowly I do want to get the um, marker um, it's a plastic organizer so that they lay horizontally and it, you can have it stacked on your on your table and you can see all the ends of them because the ends of them tell you if it's a brush tip and it tells you the number and you can see what color it is so yeah, that it tells you the number. The colors are written on them, um, violet mist, and the colors written there again, or the numbers written there again. So um, let me look. Okay, so they're usually horizontal in the cases in the stores. So this lets you know that it has a brush tip. If it has um. And it shows, <laughs> and it shows wavy lines that it's a brush tip. This one has a thick stripe, and there is no brush mark, and it says PM instead of PB for Prisma Color Marker, and then that's a Prisma brush. So, yep, that's how they are. So you can get them either with a nib or a brush. I prefer the brush. They um, blend really well. We are going to be working in this Color It coloring book. And this is what I played around with last night to see how they would work in here. They blended really well, if you can see that. They worked really well on here, but because they are an alcohol marker, they bleed through even on this book. Can you see that? Yep. 
So this is the other side. So you definitely have to have paper or something on the other side. I think you should have a plastic sheet. I don't know. Because it bleeds so much, I'm not sure um, how much it will go through with the other paper. So I'm playing on this page with the different mediums to try them. And I wrote Prismacolor markers. Whoops. And I wrote Prismacolor markers so I know what I used on here. So let's get started because we are going to be coloring that stocking with the cat. And again, I will have the link below for this coloring book and for the markers and the cases for the markers. And I might... Um, put a link down below for the plastic cases that they fit in to organize on top of your table so they lay horizontal. I don't normally leave them up like this vertical because you're supposed to lay them horizontal but for coloring I can see everything. So that's why they are like this. So we are going to get a red for here and I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I'm doing there we go I'm going to work on that candy cane so I have a really pretty red it is crimson red I'm not using the brush I'm using the light I'm using the fine tip and the thing with alcohol markers is they do um, they do bleed over the line, so you don't want to go up tight against the line like you would your pencils. And I know this won't take as long to color like it would with pencils because markers are so much quicker to work with. And I could go in and do shading and that with pencils, but I'm not going to. I'm just showing you the Prismacolor markers in this. This was my first big investment when I started coloring. And I don't remember how I found out about these markers. Because it was way before I even... I didn't know there was color tube out there. You color the berries. Um, I didn't know about any of that until after I started making videos and then I thought hmm in fact Jen started watching my color tube videos and that's when she started um, making them and she was the one that told me about Dee Dee and a couple others and then I just kept googling and then while while in Dee Dee's that's when I met Jessica and Laura and it went from there. So I like these. They're my, and like I said, I've had these like two years and they're still really, really juicy. I haven't had any issues with buying any that are dry. I had added to this collection um, this year when the art store I used to go to was going out of business and they had sales going on so I bought a bunch of open stock. Oh, and I lied. I am going to um, do a little blending in the uh, um, in the leaves. So I'm going to. I thought I had a different green. I guess not. 
Okay, so we are going to use spring green and dark green. And let's find a leaf. So I'm going to use the spring green. And we'll take the dark green. We're just going to go over this line. And then take the spring green again. And blend it out. Then you want to do it when the ink is still wet, so that's why you do one at a time. And when you first get these markers, before you have ever used them, these tops are a bear to get off. They are on there really tight. Once you start using them, it'll loosen up. Okay, here's another leaf. See, I didn't know about Kali Art markers because I believe those are alcohol based. Those are more budget friendlier than these are. But I don't know how many colors that they have. So if you just want to try these, you can buy them open stock. I don't know if you can get them open stock on Amazon, but I know you can through Jerry, Jerry's is it Artarima online and um, the Dick Blick site. But this is mostly all I colored with when I first started coloring. I colored a lot of mandalas. That's mostly all I colored. And that's where I learned to blend them. And I just fell in love with these. And I find they don't streak because they're nice and juicy. But I thought they'd be perfect in this book. Just something fun to color. And disclaimer, I have my dog. And she can just get up and start barking at any moment and scare the crap out of all of us. Because that's what she does. And she's not quiet and she sounds like she's going to kill somebody. She is a Rottweiler Shepherd Mix. She is my baby. I got her as a puppy. I had lost my dog. He was um, a Shepherd Roddy mix that I got from a shelter. He was a year and a half when I got him. 
and it was instant love when I got out of my car. I had a German Shepherd before him, and she was 12, and um, we believe she had, I don't know, it's some kind of disease that German Shepherds can get, so we had to put her down because she kept collapsing on us. So we had to put her down and she went across the Rainbow Bridge and she was, I had her as a puppy, Scott got her for me as a birthday gift. And the boys grew up with her and so I moped. I was a stay at home mom, I think when she passed, yes. And. Scott kept saying, you need another dog. No, I said, no. And he happened to read in the paper about a, um, they're in no particular order right now on these markers till I get a better system. Um, There was a Shepherd Roddy mix because I kept saying, Well, I wanted a Roddy, but I didn't think I wanted a purebred. So he's like, Well, let's. He saw it in the in the newspaper. She was at a sh he he was at a shelter. I don't want the brush. So we called and. I asked the woman that answered about him. I said um, how it, he was a year and a half. And I said, well, how is he with kids? And she says, I have children here at my house. He gets along great with kids. And I said, okay, I have cats. And she said, I have cats and kittens all over this place, and they don't bother him, and he doesn't bother them. And I said, okay, and she says, and he's come from a house with other dogs. The people had to move and couldn't take him. So she said, come on over and check him out. So Scott took me and the two boys, and I was babysitting at the time. It was during the day, during the week. So I had a big van at the time, so we packed up all four kids and took off. So, hmm. I stepped out of my car. Okay, I'm going to show you using the brush. I stepped out of the car and the woman had Drex on a leash. And as soon as he stepped outside, I was also getting out of my van and our eyes met and we both were done for it was like he was meant to be mine he acted like um, I was the best thing he'd ever had so while I was signing paperwork and paying because it was like $35 fee she's a shelter she had a lot and um while I'm in doing that, Scott and the kids are all outside playing with the kittens. And so the kids kept saying, we want a kitten. I said, no, we have, we had like four cats already at home. So behind my back, the lady's telling them, well, hurry up and shove them in the van. <laughs> and I said, no. So no, we did not end up with any of the cats or kittens. Okay, I might do some blending in the pine cones. Let's see what color is this, sienna brown. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay, here's sienna brown. So, he was my dog. 
I think he crossed the Rainbow Bridge around 12 years old, which is average age for shepherds. Um, Roddy's are usually like nine years. He was the best dog. Whoever had him as a puppy trained him so well. We never had to buy a crate. Plus, when we got him, I was home. I didn't work. So, yep, we... Like I said, whoever raised him did an awesome job. He was definitely my dog. If the kids were bad and I swatted them on their behinds, which wasn't often because they were getting up there in age. They were not teenagers, but they were a little bit older. She would go after them because I had to swat them. She never was mean. She loved the boys. What she would do was <laughs> she would take their arm and put it in her mouth and pull them away from me. She never put her teeth down on them, but she'd just pull them away from me. She would get in Scott's face if he hugged me just to let him know that I was hers <laughs> she was funny she never hurt anybody she just and she loved the kids she loved my cats or he did sorry I keep saying she was a he it's the only dog I ever had that was a male And he was so good. My dad called him a gentleman. This is Spruce Green. Ugh. I must not have used the tip on this because I couldn't get the top off. So he was already housebroken, never had an issue. Um, when we first got him, he did rip up a throw pillow and Scott punished him and he never did it again. He wasn't mean to her. Scott wasn't mean to the dog, he just punished him. And then another time he had store I had parboiled some chicken before putting it on the grill which I don't normally do I just did that time and while it was cooling a little bit I had a phone call to go to Rite Aid so I left it on the counter and when I came back the chicken was all gone And my punishment was I tied him up outside for a few minutes because he hated being tied up because he never left the property. I could, I used to forget, I let him out, go take a shower and come back outside after I realized he was outside and he'd just be laying on the porch. He never left the yard. He was not a barker. The only thing he would do was woof if someone pulled in our driveway. It was just a small woof and that was it. So this is the first dog that I have had. Daenerys is the first dog I have had that barks like she does. So yeah, I had Drex for 
I think he was 12 years old when he crossed the Rainbow Bridge. And I was lost without him. And I said, I have to have another dog. Scott always worked nights. So I was always comfortable having a dog. And I always liked the big dogs. I, I'm not a small dog person. The only small dogs that I would own is a pug. Because my grandparents' neighbor had one that I absolutely loved. She was the sweetest thing. And I don't consider them a small dog. They have the personality of a big dog. I also like the boxers and I like the bulldogs. For as far as little dogs go, I'm not, I don't like poodles, and every chihuahua I have met has bit me. Even if the people told me my dog doesn't bite. Yes, they do, they bite me, they don't like me. Trying to remember where I got this marker from. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. I don't know where I got this marker from. <laughs> oh boy. I know you guys have had a really good laugh this weekend with me and my color in and swatching. There it is. <clears throat> okay, his hat. What color do we want? I mean, they're supposed to be green or red, but it doesn't have to be. And if I want to do silver and gray, I will have to use something else, like a gel pen, because I don't have the metallics in this yet. So, yep, when, when Drex passed, I said, well, I'll wait till I come back from Myrtle Beach and go looking for a dog. So I did. I called up a lot of shelters. Do you have a Roddy Shepherd mix? Nobody had that. Do you have a Roddy? Do you have a Shepherd? Nope. I wanted to go through a German Shepherd site for rescues. Scott would, Scott didn't want to do that because it's two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars to adopt. And I said, but they already have all their shots and they're already neutered or spayed. Right there is a plus because it's so expensive. So I ended up going to um, like a dog pound shelter and they do put them down. So I just happened to go to see what they had and they had a yellow dog that I was told was a shepherd lab mix. Okay. They didn't know anything about her. They didn't have a background on her. They, she was found on a back road in the middle of nowhere. So, because I was really desperate for another dog, I didn't spend enough time with her to get to know her. Her and I did not get along, unfortunately. She was always trying not to bite, bite me, but it was like she just didn't want me around her. Whoops. I think I just grabbed the wrong color. Oh, well. Well. 
So I had her for a year. She was like eight months when I got her. I could not train her at all. And I know how to train dogs. All of my dogs I've had, I got as puppies. I've always been able to train them. Not her. I dreaded coming home from work. She had to be in a crate. We, When we first got her, we didn't put her in a crate, and she ate everything she possibly could. She chewed up chapsticks. She got into things. I'm surprised she wasn't sick. So um, we had to buy a crate. That's the first time I ever owned a crate with a dog. Uh, I'm trying to find colors. I'm using the brush tip. So yeah, her and I just did not get along. She loved Justin. But if I let her out, she would take off on me. And she always ignored me. I'd always have to send Justin. Justin would call her. She'd come right back. So her and I did not get along at all. And she's supposed to be my dog. She was very hyper. The vet said there was no shepherd in her. She was a golden retriever, yellow lab mix. I'm like, okay, so I, you know, she got her shots. I had her spayed. Just was not working out. We had her for a year. And finally I told Scott, I'm getting ready to go to Myrtle Beach for my retreat. Please, please find a home for her while I'm gone. So he did. And the owners are like, we can understand why you had such problems with her. She's very high strung. She has to be on the move and very active 24-7. She hardly slept. And she is now living with their daughter in a dorm at college. She is a service dog. I guess she has um, their daughter gets um, seizures. So that's why she has the dog. And the dog is awesome with her. So there was a reason I wasn't supposed to have her, but there was a reason that I brought her into our life so that I was able to find a home for her. They, the people that got her also had tons of land. They had horses. They used to take the, and they had horse trails and they'd take her with them and she loved it. So she wasn't getting enough stimulation with us. And my yard wasn't quite big enough for her. She needed, they said she needed a purpose in life. That's how they put it. She needed a purpose in life. And I guess that she's allowed in the pool at the college. So I'm glad she's happy. I'm glad she found um, a home that she's happy in. She wasn't happy here. So I took my time because I know eventually I'm going to want another dog. I'm taking my time this time and I'm not getting a shelter dog unless I know its background. If I don't know its background and it's not a little puppy, forget it. So, I took my time, took my time. I called shelters all over. I'm looking for this kind of dog. Can you help me out? i seen a lot of them in the penny saver for what I was looking for. But they'd be 10 years old. Well... 
I'm only going to have another year or two out of them. And I know they need a home. And if I had to do it over again after um, Daenerys, I probably would. I probably will do that. But I wanted a puppy or a shepherd. I wanted something young. Okay, what do you think about Spanish orange on here? Too orangey? Should it be a... Uh, let's try it. Oh, that's not bad. So like I said, we took our time and I kept eyeing these dogs. I kept going to the German Shepherd rescues in this area. And if I found dogs that were younger, they either didn't get along with kids or cats. And then I found a couple that I really liked and Scott says I don't want to pay that kind of money. Which I didn't understand because... They already have their shots and are spayed or neutered. It was like, it was over $300 to have Roxy spayed. So why not pay the $250 or $300 for the dog that's already been spayed or neutered? Anyways, so one Thanksgiving, it was a year later... I left my parents and my sister was texting me. Her boyfriend Chuck saw an ad in the, on Facebook that somebody had Roddy Shepherd puppies in Pen Yan, which was like a two hour drive. They were born a week or two before Thanksgiving. They'll be ready at Christmas. So I got the number and I called the owners and they said, yep, we have a couple left. What we're doing is letting people come pick out the puppy that they like and buy a small collar and we'll put the collar on them. So I bought a really small collar, the smallest you can get. Well, Daenerys must have been the runt because that collar was huge on her. I'm doing red here. I have carmine red. I also believe with these markers, they have the same number with the same color as the pencils. I believe. So I picked out Daenerys and I already knew what her name was going to be because I watched Game of Thrones and she was my favorite per character on there. So I would call every couple, every, they told me I could call whenever I wanted to check on her so I did and they said that I could pick her up. December 23rd or the 24th. I think they said the 24th and I said really because it's Christmas Eve. I said I don't have plans but you won't and they said no it's fine. So Christmas Eve was going to be on a Tuesday. So I called Sunday just to see if there was a chance we could get her earlier and they said absolutely she's the only one left. Everybody else picked theirs up over the weekend. So I said to Scott, we can go get her now. She was just a little bitty thing. Now she probably weighs about 80 pounds. And she slept curled up in my arms the whole trip. We stopped at a pet store to buy toys and stuff and a collar that fit her. And we took her in because you were allowed to take her in. And you should have seen all the little kids that were in there. They saw her and fell in love with her. Okay, how many minutes? 39. So, yeah, and the rest is history. She's been my dog. She's 
always up my butt. I always had her between my legs in the recliner when I was cross stitching or reading. She was always with me. So, I don't know why she's a barker. Because I've trained her since she was seven weeks old. I'm just having fun de deciding on colors. So she is now three years old. And I, my, I was talking to my mom yesterday, and we think she's acting the way she is because Justin moved out. My crafts are all in here now. She's very confused, and she's laying on top of my stuff because Justin moved out right after I came back from Myrtle Beach. I was gone for 10 days, so we're wondering if she's afraid I'm leaving again. So she's been, she has a small pile of her toys in my bedroom on top of my shoes. And I don't think she was going to chew my little peeper frog, but I think she just wanted something of mine. So I do want to, I haven't seen Justin since Thanksgiving because he works at Target and he usually has every other weekend off, but they were told none of the employees are allowed any weekends off till after Christmas. So I haven't had a chance to see him. He did stop here Tuesday and did laundry, but I was babysitting and he didn't stay. So I didn't see him. But I think I might ask him for an old t-shirt of his to put on her dog bed so that she has something of him. So... Yes, I know I went a little bit out of the lines. I've been doing okay with my That's pretty But as for her barking Yeah, I can't figure that one out There's my spruce green So when this video is done, I plan on just sitting and watching YouTube videos the rest of the day. I was still watching day two of um, Sweet Colorful Christmas of Anne's. I will go and watch Sharon's. They said she sing. Um, she was singing a song in the video, and they said she has an awesome voice. I know she's in, I forget, the Lions Club. I don't know if she sings in, I know she's in some kind of choir. So I will have to go watch that. So go, go um, watch Sweet Colorful Christmas. And Anne and Sharon are the hostesses. Anne is from A Colorful Life. And Sharon is from Sweet Nightingale, 1973. So go watch them. And there are two other color tubers that I watch that are doing a 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. And that is Color My World 
and Prismatic Attic. You have to be subscribers and you have to leave a comment under every one of their videos. Like um, Color My World does a video one day and then the next day Prismatic Attic does a video and then the following day is Color My World so they alternate. So um, go watch that. They um they do one of I don't know if they both did speed color and I know one of them does. Okay, this stays white, that stays white. This here. Jen's been quiet. I haven't seen any videos from her in a while, but I know she said she's her uh, work schedule's been crazy. And Jessica's been, um, she's been mourning her dog. My heart goes out to her. I love Jessica. She's such a sweet person. So, we haven't seen videos from her. She needs some time. I have... I'm um, texted her because we have swapped phone numbers. I have texted her to let her know she's in my thoughts and prayers. And she has a German Shepherd, so I asked how he was doing with losing the other dog. And she said that he normally doesn't sleep up on the bed with her and her husband, but he's been up on the bed. And like, yep, they grieve just like we do. I also want to pull out um, my boxes out of my closet so I can put away the Halloween stuff and put up the Christmas. I've just been too busy coloring. I haven't wanted to. I'm a bah humbug Grinch type person anyways during Christmas. So And I know I've got a lot, I'm going through my Halloween stuff because a lot of that I don't really want anymore. It's old, so I will be throwing some of that out. And there's a lot of Christmas stuff I'll be throwing out because it's so old. Okay, flowers. Let's see here. stories about cats. Now, those would take me many, many videos. I've had many cats. Most of them die of old age. I have had a couple get hit by cars. <clears throat> Two of them. Three. Three have been hit by cars. Two of them were indoor cats that had snuck out. One I didn't know had snuck out. And I've had one die of cancer when she was 9 or 10 years old. 
Otherwise, my cats usually live to be like 16 to 18 years old. Which I do have two now that are at least 14. You wouldn't know it. <clears throat> Not the way they act. Let's see. Pearl is two or three years old. Ruby is seven. She'll be eight in a couple months. Molly is let's see. I got her. Molly is eleven. And then outsider and rascal are at least fourteen. I have a feeling this will have to be done in two parts, but that's okay because the second part will be done. So it's Sunday. What do you all have planned for today? Are you ready for Christmas? Do you have your house decorated? Do you have your tree up? I have a feeling I'm going to need a garbage bag or two to throw a lot of stuff out. None of it really has sentimental value. I just held on to the stuff. Next year I would really like to go to Hobby Lobby like Justin did when they have the sales going on. I've always had my Christmas trees with all handmade ornaments, all the ornaments that were given to me from childhood on up, all the kids' ornaments that I bought them or people have bought them um, from baby, from the years they were born until recently. Amber doesn't put up those kind of ornaments on her trees, so I don't give her Dylan's ornaments, and Justin didn't want his. Justin did his tree in silvers and blues. And I am thinking, because I don't have little kids, that I want to do that kind of tree. But I want purple, deep purple and silver. But I will still add on a few ornaments.
from their childhood. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm going to end this video for now, and then we will finish it in part two. So, bye-bye, my peepers.